for everybody out there that's a bit of a needle phobe, I get it. I'm an acupuncturist. I believe in the power of healing. I've been practicing this medicine for a long time now. And even me, I don't want to look at that needle go through my skin. The good news is the little tiny acupuncture needle, it's really like as thin as a human hair. And the beautiful thing is when you put this needle into the body, your body's forced to make a healing response and it creates a healing response instantaneously changing the blood and brain chemistry to help reconnect the nervous system. Well, welcome Dr. Haley Parker to the Core Connections podcast. I am so excited for our conversation today. We're going to dive in and talk all about actual acupuncture. And I realize we haven't had anyone on this podcast in uh, over six years where we've actually talked about acupuncture. I personally love acupuncture. I think it's incredible. And I love the work that you are doing. So can you share with everyone listening a little bit more about you, what got you started in acupuncture, and then now you're teaching acupuncture to those that want to become acupuncturists, which I love. Oh, thanks, Erica. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, Totally. I never grew up thinking I was going to be an acupuncturist, let alone now working in education. So the, the path really chose me. Um, I like to say, but it was a it was a co-creation in a lot of ways because I was a very active child, like rambunctious and trying to keep up with my brothers. I had a lot of physical injuries. And in fact, I, um, I have a back that has scoliosis. So I was always looking and seeking ways in which I can manage my pain. And my parents were very proactive in taking me to the chiropractor and physical therapist, which, you know, 30 years ago, this was still pretty new in the way that you, uh, in the medical model. And, um, as a college athlete way back when, um, you have a tendency to listen to your coaches more than you listen to your body. And so I had, I sustained a lot of injuries just by natural, like way of the, the the body. And, um, they, they never stopped squawking. And so as I then retired from athletics, I was out working with my grandfather, um, and he, probably was tired of hearing me complain and suggested I go and see his acupuncturist and being desperate to just manage my pain. I ended up doing that and it changed my life. And I wondered why in the world did anyone not suggest this before? And so I started shadowing this doctor and working with him. And it innately made sense to me that of how the body was working and how it was responding. And so I decided to study the medicine And ultimately now, 15 years later, I am helping to teach and promote the next generation of practitioners. So through this conversion moment, um, I decided to become an acupuncturist and here I am with you. I love it. Well, Dr. Haley, I feel like I resonate so much with your story because of my pain too, is why I do what I do. It's so cool when we, we are so personally passionate about what we teach and then we see how it can literally transform people's lives. I think it's phenomenal. To that point, absolutely. Now that I, I've seen a personal transformation myself because um, working with this medicine, you can't help but learn for yourself how to be a better doctor of yourself. Um, But equally, when I see students walk through our doors and how they're just so geared to like getting to the goal line and like becoming licensed and starting to work and practice in, in this medicine and these like waves of refinement that occur, and how they leave such different people because of this transformative, transcending process um, that holistic medicine and just the art and the tradition brings. Yeah, I love it. It's so incredible. So can you talk about how acupuncture really, like, how does it work? Um, How is it supporting our health and wellness and enhancing us to just feel so much better. Like I've done a lot of acupuncture, not recently. It's a good reminder. I I need to get back in my crazy schedule, (laughs) scheduling in some acupuncture. Um, but can you talk about like, what is it doing people? And I know a lot of people are scared of like needles being stuck in their body. And that's what keeps people really away from doing acupuncture is what I see. Totally. And you know, for everybody out there, that's a bit of a needle phobe, I get it. I'm an acupuncturist. I believe in the power of healing. I've been practicing this medicine for a long time now. And even me, I don't want to look at that needle go through my skin because there's just an aversion to something piercing your body. Um, That is totally normal. The good news is 
the little tiny acupuncture needle is a sixth of the size of a hypodermic needle. So it's so, so thin. It's really like as thin as a human hair. Um, and there's something, it's a modern technology. It's called a guide tube. And that disperses the free ends of the nerves at the surface of the skin. So it really distracts the nerves to where you don't feel the little tap into your skin. And the beautiful thing is when you put this needle into the body, it, you are, your body's forced to make a healing response and it creates a healing response instantaneously changing the blood and brain chemistry to help reconnect the nervous system. Now, there are many, many different theories for how acupuncture works on the cellular level, but how I explain it to my patients is that as this little needle goes into the skin, the body's system is alerted and it's increasing circulation. It's promoting the immune system. It's helping to, you know, wash away the cellular debris in an injured inflamed area. And it's bringing oxygen nutrients to that area to where that cellular tissue can create repair. In addition to that, it's helping to override nerve sig signals. In, for instance, like say you've been suffering with chronic pain for a long time and your body's warped and compensated into a new pattern, it's gonna help rewire that. Um, it's also great for helping with the digestive system, helping to like clear out and detox a lot of inflammation that we have in our gut, as well as like filter out the filters because we forget about it, but our organs are doing so much work without us thinking about it and helping to maintain our quality of life and keep us alive, but they get backlogged too. So in helping to like push all that junk out, um, including like helping with hormone balancing and just overall a sense of relief because it acupuncture also helps release endorphins and neurotransmitters, helping with the brain body connection and helping us get back into that therapeutic window where our body knows how to take care of itself. Yeah. So much of our health and wellness really comes back to our nervous system. And I've been doing more and more of that and talking about that more just in the movement side of things that I teach with breath work. And it's so fascinating to me. And you made me think of a couple of weeks ago from at least talking to you right now, I did an episode really talking about pain and like fear of movement from people who have been in pain for a long time. And it's the, it's, that's really in like ingrained in the brain. Like, Oh, if we move, right. Like it, we're going to have pain. And this is where I think something like acupuncture can be really great to help facilitate some of that rewiring of the brain and the nervous system. And you want to talk about that a little bit? I would love to talk about <laughs> that. So you are spot on. And I think most people who work with the body, um, a lot of practitioners like mind body practitioners, yoga practitioners, Pilates practitioners, where they see how people are moving, they can see these ergonomics of when someone's in pain. And the body, um, we as human beings, but particularly the body that seems to have a mind of its own, um, is actually, there's a stronger stimuli to avoid pain than there is to seek pleasure. And we forget about this, but our brains are still archaically wired back to our ancestors. And about 95%, that's totally a made up number, but like majority of our brain power is under this autonomic control, meaning it's it's going without us thinking about it. And it is helping our eyes blink. It's helping our lungs inhale, exhale. It's secreting little digestive enzymes. And really that autonomic nervous system is there to protect us and keep us alive. And so much of our function is to maintain um, a quality of life where we're not in pain. And so when we have a pain or when we have a perceived pain, our body tends to tighten up and guard. Like for any of you listeners out there, if you just think about pain, you almost can feel this like instantaneous, like clenching in your gut and like tightening in your chest and guarding. And that's because your nervous system is literally perceiving like what could happen and trying to protect you and keep it away from that, right? So with that, when you have pain, say a chronic pain, like, um, you know, sciatic pain running down the leg, and you know that every time you take a step, you're going to feel this jolt, your body will start to lean and create more pressure on the opposite leg. And over time, that's going to create your, your gait to be off and ultimately probably walk up and down the back. I always sing that song, like the hip bones connected to the thigh bone. And we would laugh about that when we were kids and not in pain. Like we didn't even know what uh, aging sounded like. Right. And then as we get older, we're like, oh, that's not a very funny song at all. because Everything is so connected. 
So um, I, you spoke about this idea of this brain body connection. There is something called the homunculus, and that is a mapping of the entire body's nervous system, uh, the peripheral nervous system up here in the brain. It's actually in the parietal lobe of the brain. And with that, with chronic pain that's happening to the body, that map in the brain actually gets distorted. And so the signaling from a certain area of the body is actually honed in and exaggerated in the brain. So say, for instance, you, you know, take, have an injury to your wrist um, from picking your kid up a hundred times and putting them into the crib or putting them into their high chair. After a while, your wrist, um, say it's inflamed, that can heal, but then that brain map is still in high alert. And we need something like acupuncture to tune the body back to say, okay, let's reconnect these, these maps and make sure that they're communicating the right way. Does that make sense, Erica? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's so much of what we're doing is retraining our brain and retraining our nervous system. It's so fascinating. Right. And we forget, like, just, we get so busy, right? But we have stimuli that are hitting us constantly. And it's not necessarily telling us like good messages, right? Like we, and also our modern lifestyle, we sit in cars, we're texting, um, we are driving like clenched in traffic or sitting at our desk with our mouse hand. And so many of those repeated injuries are stimulating our brain to morph and create these like bad habits, you know, our shoulders start to roll forward, our, our neck starts to lean forward, our like lower lumbar curve starts to, to work its way out. And all of that has repercussions. And we, and we don't think about that until our body's speaking to us in these symptoms like pain or like um, digestion, horrible cramping sensation, because our, our body doesn't speak English, it speaks symptom. And if we're not listening to these little subtle cues, the body starts to find really clever, loud ways to get our attention. Yeah. And I think digestion, uh, when I work with clients who have, you know, digestive issues, I've had my own, there's a lot of factors, but stress is one. And I think it's so fascinating when it's like, I, you know, talk to clients, work with clients that they're like, I'm doing all the things right. Like I'm eating right. I'm feeding my gut the right things. And, but yet they're living a very, very stressful life. It's like, we can do all the things right, but if that stress in our life or that perceived stress is still so heightened, that's kind of offsetting some of that. And this is where I think acupuncture can be so great at helping you to helping your body to facilitate, to calm that stress, helping you to learn, to be able to handle stress, like not take it on personally, like let it roll over you. Don't take it on. So easy to say, so hard to do. I, I know. Even as a practitioner, um, but you're absolutely correct. So what you're alluding to it is so brilliant. And there's something we, we know about this idea of fight or flight. And then the opposite would be the rest and digest. And the, the fancy words for that is the sympathetic overdrive or where the nervous system is on that, like, like fear based, like reactive, like everything is just on high alert. And the opposite of that would be the parasympathetic or where rest and digest occurs. Literally your body can't go into repair if it's on fight or flight, because all energy sources are going to make sure that you can like run away from danger or, you know, uh, fast twitch reflex. Right. And so rest and digest in our modern world. I go back to that nervous system analogy of our, our ancestors. They lived pretty simple lives uh, relative to now, right? And they maybe were out running an attack from a, a tribe or like a predator. But then after that attack was done, they had time for their nervous systems to come back down into that normal therapeutic window. Nowadays, we don't really have anything to signal to our bodies that we can come back down. We have constant text messages, emails popping in, and that perceived stress, We, our nervous system cannot necessarily differentiate a saber-toothed tiger attack um, from an email. And while that sounds so outrageous, if our nervous system's on that fight or flight, people can consciously understand that they're not stressed out, they're not in danger, but their bodies can't. And so the long term, that tissue repair is so dulled and it's diminished to where their cells are continuing to break down. They're feeling fatigued. They're noticing that their digestive system isn't just moving really well. Their brain isn't getting enough nutrition, let alone neurotransmitters to keep them in a good, positive mood. 
And it can become really frustrating because friends will tell them, oh, you know, you just have to look on the bright side. They physically can't <laughs> because yeah. their their entire world is just like painted with yeah. this, this fear. Let alone if under long chronic stress, there's something called phase two liver detoxification and that gets shut down. And that's where we really are eliminating all of those horrible, horrible toxins and byproducts that our liver is trying to store and protect our vital organs. And if phase two liver detoxification shuts down, that can really affect our brains and thus affect our perception even more. Yeah. Detoxification is so powerful. I talk about that quite often. Um, so it's fascinating. I was going to ask you this. Do you recommend to your clients to get rid of the, uh, smartwatches? Oh, I really do. Now I also believe and everyone has a choice and the original term for doctor is teacher. So I like to teach my patients and I like to send them out to resources and I like them to make their own decisions. I also believe in something called toxic load because we live in a world that we're going to have electromagnetic stimulation and we're going to have toxins. So no judgment there. Um, but with that, there are actually points on acupuncture channels that directly relate to the metabolism and the endocrine system. And that smartwatch, which is getting signaling right into it constantly. And a lot of people even sleep with these watches. It completely disrupts the circadian rhythm. And so now not everybody is as sensitive as others. And certainly certain people are way more resilient um, in their rhythms. So that that is not across the board. However, because we deal with so many individuals that have a lot of different factors that are precipitating um, into their, their main complaints, we look at all of these things. And that happens to be one that I see a lot, particularly because we're in a world where we have so much external stimulation bombarding our bodies that we just cannot, we can't decipher it all. Um, and I relate to smaller analogies like those um, like how a moonbeam can be mistaken by one of those road lights when little baby turtles are trying to crawl to the ocean, similar to Apple watches and Wi-Fi signals and why we recommend keeping your phone away from you when you sleep at night. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. I It's interesting because I have actually seen, and again, it's like you said, some people are more sensitive than others, but I've actually seen clients when they take their smartwatch off their balance is so much better. And like, that's mind boggling to me. I'm like, it's really for some people affecting their, like you said, their entire system. I can't wear one. I don't like the way it makes me feel, but I also see it's super, it's so distracting. It's like trying to be present in life and with kids and with work. And it's like, every time someone gets something, they're constantly looking at their watch. And I'm like, that is pulling you out of whatever you're working on. <laughs> so I don't know. I just think it's a big thing that it's like, we want to work to improve our nervous system, decrease our stress, like wear it if you have to, right? I get sometimes like a lot of us have kids. Sometimes I do wish like I could just have it. So if my kids reach out to me, but I just, I can't. So I have to periodically check my phone when I'm doing things. Right. But every time you get those like signals, it, it, I feel like what I see it do to clients is it just like, it's like, it pops them up into that fight or flight, pops them up into that fight or flight. And it's like, if that's happening every 30 seconds, like you can't even calm your nervous system, like at all. Like you don't even know what it feels like because we're not even giving ourselves a chance. So I anyway, I get really passionate about that. Things like that, that I'm like, we don't have to, we don't have to wear them. We didn't have them until whatever, how long ago. <laughs> and if you really want something to track your health, I personally like the aura ring because you can, it's not Bluetooth. So it's not sending you, you know, it's not buzzing you or sending a light into your body. You know, it's, it's all storing in there. There's probably a little bit of EM, EMF with it as well, but it's nothing like where it's constantly emitting from a phone and back and forth. Right. It's negligible. Um, as far as I'm chomping at the bit to respond <laughs> to that, because you know, certainly there's a level of consciousness that has to happen here. And there again, each person's going to be different and knowing those variables, you can make better choices for you. Certainly my job is a, 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 can be a very demanding job. And I, people always laugh. They're like, Haley, you're an acupuncturist. Aren't you supposed to be Zen? <laughs> but the, um, 
like I, I need to be in multiple places at once. And I think a lot of mothers feel that way too, right? Especially if you're a mother of, of two, which seems like, you know, two squared. So it can be, it can be that you're pulled in many different directions. I, I, I admire my friends who are mothers. Uh, they work at home. They're still like, you know, super woman in so many ways. And, and yet when they come in for treatment, when I am trying to treat them, it's like their body has even forgotten how to relax because they've been in fight or flight for so long. They don't even realize. And the moment they take a breath, sometimes this wave of emotion comes over them that they're like, oh my God, I, I have not let down. I didn't even realize that the weight of the world was on my shoulders and like how much they're tuning back into themselves. And I think that's where, if we can maybe have a healthy medium. Buddha always, you know, proposed the middle way of knowing that your watch is a conduit to the modern world or your phone is a, a conduit to the modern world, but not to get sucked into it. And I have to sometimes practice this. People who love me sometimes like take my phone away from me and just get me to recognize that, you know, we need to practice balance because long-term that just pushes us further and further off that track where our bodies won't know how to self-correct and we'll need to seek further intervention. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I want to shift a little bit and I want to talk about postpartum, um, for our moms, because there's so much that goes on through pregnancy, birth, and that postpartum recovery. Um, so I guess we should, I should say pregnancy and postpartum. So can you talk to our pre and postpartum moms out there about how acupuncture could be very beneficial for helping them? I would love to. Now, I always have to preface, the, preface these conversations by saying that I am not yet a mother myself. However, it is in the plan. Um, but I, I like to tell my patients that because um, sometimes like it's hard to relate to every aspect that goes on and people can say like, oh, but how do you know, Right. Um, and so I know through like being a primary source for these patients and um, to say it nicely, you're essentially living with this little parasite in you for nine months. And that drains a lot of your energy. And um, we love this little parasite and we are designing, our bodies are designed to give this so much of our nutrients. So then once that little baby is born into the world and you can think of nothing more joyous in your life your body is just so depleted and you're still trying to work to build, um, you know, milk and be able to feed the baby and give the baby the immune system and then protect it with your life. So your energy there again is divided quite a bit, but for, um, for the sake of acupuncture in this regimen, acupuncture is helping bring your body back into its normal, uh, circadian rhythm. It's also helping to stimulate, um, nutrient distribution as what, what not only uh, when the baby, you know, is there in utero, but also postpartum um, tissue repair is going to have to happen on many levels. And so while needles don't need to go into these areas that are super, super sensitive by giving your body the ability to be in a balanced state, less energy is dispersed and more energy is going into areas that are needing um, that help. So there are channels across the body and certain points are on the distal ends of the limbs. And I call it like coding where some points on the hands and some points in the feet actually help the brain recognize, ah, we need to go down into that womb and help everything come back to normal. We need to go down into that lower, we call it the lower jowl. So that lower abdominal region or the lower, you know, underside the pelvic floor area and really help create more circulation and promote those muscles to mend. So in that way, Acupuncture is helping your body to go through its natural healing process, but just help exponentially speed up that curve. Yeah. And I feel like it's something great that moms can do really soon after giving birth, um, totally. right. To help just rebalance things. And, you know, and I get really passionate about the postpartum recovery, um, because I see any, so we have to start having this conversation prior to pregnancy if possible during pregnancy, just to help keep things as balanced throughout the body. I do it more from a movement breath, you know, fascial perspective. And then what acupuncture can do can go even deeper and help connect to connect things together even better. But we see time and time again, when we can help support moms have a, easier recovery. It just, it helps to decrease the, 
depression postpartum, helps her to feel better, helps her to get back to doing the things in her life, like being active, taking care of baby, really feeling like she can take care of baby. Cause that's like the worst feeling when you just feel like you're just so exhausted, so tired. Maybe baby's having a hard time nursing. Like there's just so many factors. Maybe you're recovering from a tough birth or you've got a couple you know, kiddos that you're also having to keep up with. There's so many things. And so this is why I love uh, this conversation because I think it's so powerful. Anything we can do to help support moms, I think is, can be life-changing for her. Absolutely. Well, and you referred to um, the depression and, you know, that is a really, that is a really difficult thing to be carrying with you as you're caring for a baby, if not, you know, two or three young children and um, trying to still be, in, you know, out in the world, because you're going to have company visit to meet the new member of the family. Um, as I referred to before, you know, this parasite and forgive me, moms, I know they're precious little beings, but you know, this, this little innate soul that's here in, in the body. Um, when, when you're so much of your nutrient, um, intake is going to feeding this little being, your nutrition is going to need to be really, really good. And that's why we recommend, you know, prenatal vitamins and, and helping to, to whatever you're intake and going, going into this little baby. But in addition to that, once that baby's out, a lot of those nutrients that you're receiving that were building your neurotransmitters, your cells, like you're having to work on just such limited supply that's been recycled a few times over. So it's not as dense. It's not as strong. And, um, it, we need to switch those, those valves back over to making sure that your body first can absorb and receive that. Secondly, that, that creation cycle is in full works. Um, and I think it's something that may be interesting to some of you, but I usually see my patients the day of labor and I help Mm -hmm. induce labor as well. Oh, I love that. Some of my yeah. favorite patients were patients that were having a lot of trouble um, with fertility and even just syncing up their circadi- circadian rhythms and balancing out their hormones, bringing them out of that fight or flight state to where their body knew it was safe to be able to um, um, start the family process. In addition to working with them as they're uh, bringing this new little being into the world, it's been such an amazing journey to be a part of that and and really uh, get to know somebody through their transformation into motherhood as well. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I I know acupuncture would be great for the father as well. So with, for, speaking of infertility, I'm glad you mentioned that because infertility is just skyrocketing. Right. And we, we do have to remember that it's, it's, it's a combination of both. And the cool thing talking about fertility, cause it comes up sometimes on the podcast is that male sperm can really improve their quality of sperm in about 90 days. So working on both, like having mom go, having dad go. So we're both working to balance and sync up. And I think that when it comes to infertility, this acupuncture should be right in there with that conversation of doing all the other things, but helping to balance the system. In addition to that, it's really great for the partnership. Um, a lot of times my female patients will bring their husbands in to receive kind of a couple's treatment, even if they need a break and it's in a separate room, but it's, not only is it helping like the team aspect of the marriage and the, or, or in our relationship, um, but they're both able to understand what the other one is going through and the moral support of the husband being there through these treatments, they receive benefit of helping to promote their circulation, their oxygenation of tissues, um, the quality of sperm, not only the count, but you know, the, the motility of the sperm and of getting the nutrients to the, we call it the, prenatal chi that goes there into the conception. So all of that is really valuable and really important. Um, And I see that as well with acupuncture being more than uh, working just on the physical body, but that mental, emotional, spiritual Mm -hmm. body as well, that is, we know part of the partnership. That's why a lot of you can probably uh, have telepathy with your person because there's just so many ways in which we're interconnected. Uh, I love that. Okay. I'm really going to shift here on you, but I know you talk about, um, doing acupuncture on the face and how that can help be a holistic alternative to Botox because that comes up, right? Every woman's like, 
What can we do that's natural and not putting toxins on our face, in our skin, things like that. So yeah, this is, I never really honestly thought about this before, but I mean, it makes sense to me. So can you talk about it? Sure. Well, I had someone cleverly say, well, I'm here for my no tox <laughs> rather <laughs> than Botox. And um, so there is um, a whole section of acupuncture that focuses on facial rejuvenation. I just like to make the statement though, that, you know, needles in the face is a great intervention. However, we have maps on our body and that the quality of your skin on your face has a lot to do with your internal um, health. And so making sure that you're drinking enough water, making sure that you're getting enough nutrition, making sure that you are, um, you know, following a regimen, whether it's like putting on some lotion or, you know, making sure you protect yourself from harmful and environmental elements. Even we see um, people's visit, uh, excuse me, like mental health on their face, right? When we're making these frowns or, you know, we're under a lot of stress, these maps are reflected. The internal body is reflected on the external body. So with that, when my patients come in for this facial rejuvenation, acupuncture, we go through this lifestyle counseling because we're not just trying to treat the symptom. We're really trying to treat the root of the issue and help the body blossom from the inside out. Now, these needles are even tinier. And so we will lace fine lines and wrinkles. We will help with jowls and jaw lines. We'll help with like the decolletage and helping the basically pin up the face. Um, what is beautiful about acupuncture is it does help with that microcirculation. It also helps with muscle tone. So certain areas of the body that have just become fatigued from lack of movement or just, um, you know, certain other muscles overpowering that opposite reaction, it'll help wake them back up. Um, it'll also help with collagen production and being able to bring more tone to that skin, tone and texture. I love the word collagen production, right? Working yeah. in the fascia, the fascial system. Great. Okay. I love it. I mean, I'm glad that you pointed out, right? It's our face is not just about working on our face. It's the entire system. And I think that gets lost a lot <laughs> when we, you know, when we talk about beauty and anti-aging and all that stuff. Well, and this is something I just would love to take a moment to say, you know, sometimes we get really like marketed to and pulled and this is how we're supposed to look. And yet I, I think many of you have probably encountered an elderly woman that has these most beautiful smile lines. And like, she has like, like stories that are written on her body and she's just glowing from the inside and she is just captivating. And the beauty that is there is very different than that youthful beauty of this like porcelain skin. They're both equally beautiful. However, there, there, are, there are different versions of the word beauty. And so we shouldn't look at these lines always with shame. Now, any of us want to maintain our youth and any of us want to keep our health. That is absolutely a thing. Um, there's also absolutely using a little bit of both. So for a lot of my patients who actually do also uh, dabble, in receiving Botox or say wrestling or say, you know, the, the fillers, they'll come to maintain their, their overall health to where their bodies are, are doing a little bit of the job too. Makes sense. Yes. Thank you for explaining that. Okay. I have to ask because I love always bringing up pelvic floor health when we can, do you see with clients that have pelvic floor dysfunction, um, incontinence, things like that, do you see acupuncture help? with that? I do. I do. Now we, we speak a lot of acupuncture in the whole tradition of traditional Chinese medicine. There are also modalities like herbal formulas. Um, there are different body work stretches and exercises. So using a mix of uh, treatment modalities for our individual patient, um, is how we see the best results with the acupuncture. Um, I, I translate it like what they maybe were thinking um, ancient times to modern times, but long, long time ago, uh, before we knew what the nervous system was or the circulatory system was, the Chinese knew that there were these meridians that ran through the body. And these meridians were like highways and byways that, you know, communicated different signals everywhere. And so with that, if say an organ is getting lazy or prolapsing, or there's not enough stimuli to fully like release um, um, 
urine or or have a really strong push and urgency to go to the bathroom, acupuncture is able to use these points along these meridians to make that stimuli stronger and help retrain the brain, the body, and the muscles that surround the organs. So with that, um, through, usually it takes more than one treatment to, to click this into place, but with that, it's like a, um, it's like a rehab program for the body to start to make a little bit more sense. Um, there's also this aspect of the peripheral nerves that come through the spine from that central nervous system down the spinal column. Sometimes there's just a little bit of a disconnect. Maybe it's because you've had a, a bad fall or because of pregnancy, you know, you've been carrying a, a kid on your hip and your spine is not quite moving um, as, mo as mobile as it could. So with that, the acupuncture can help to reconnect the wires, reconnect the dots and make sense of those stimuli going into the organs and helping everything to, to go back where it's meant to be. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So ladies, listen up. You know, I get very passionate helping teach. We've got to do the movement aspect of it as well. But I love finding other modalities that can also be a part of our healing journey. So, so great. I love this. Love this, Dr. Haley. With that, oh. if I can interject. Yeah. So the movement part is fantastic. And I believe that sometimes my patients come in so frustrated because they've done it all. They've gone to the chiropractor, they've done their pelvic floor PT, they've done their like nutritional therapy, they've been patient and let their body heal and they've done everything right. And there's not like, there's nothing more frustrating when you're like, what is it, right? I've done everything. Sometimes it's just that you haven't told the body, you mm -hmm. haven't reset the body. Yeah. Um, and the order of operations of the biorhythms then makes sense to the body again. So it doesn't have to be a really long journey. Sometimes just getting the body back into that state of where they reset, they, your body turns mm -hmm. off and it restarts again. Everything works better when it's powered down and powered back on. Absolutely. And this kind of ties back up to like what we were talking about in the beginning with the nervous system, because I see it time and time again with clients and students that, you know, we're working on getting that pelvic floor deep core to wake up and we're ingrained in such just like, we have to force, we try to force, we're trying to make the connections happen. And that's actually the opposite of what we want to be doing. And that to me is where like, we have to figure out how to get over that hump. And this is why I love this conversation. Cause I think acupuncture can be one of those pieces that help us to rebalance, calm the nervous system. So we can be more effective in, for example, the movement practice and the stuff that I teach. So I think it works so amazingly well together. It does. And you know, with your work, so in Chinese uh, medicine and traditional theory, women tend to be more yin, where the masculine tend to be more yang. And so we as women can tend to, to take on this yang quality and we actually burn out our yin. And that yang quality would be like, you know, going to the gym every single day, even though our body's saying, oh, we're exhausted and we're pushing, 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 or we're very like, you know, aggressive and, and we're not sitting in our real, like natural essence, which is more mm. of the bubble bath, right? More of like letting it come to us, the gravity pull. Um, I'm sure you women know the power that you have um, in that you can just give your husband a look and he'll like, no, he's in trouble. So there's this difference in, in essence is what I'm trying to say. And women tend to possess more of the yin. And we don't do very many exercises or very many practices that help cultivate that yin, such as yoga, breathing, uh, Pilates that help work with our core or, you know, focusing in on our lower jowl, that lower abdominal area. And with that, there can just be a further and further discrepancy where it's a lot harder for helping our bodies connect the two polarities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so hard. We have so many women that come into my world and it's trying to find that more feminine energy because we have just been go, 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 go. But as you start to embrace it, it is so amazing to me how it just unlocks so much potential. Um, not just even potential, but like the, um, the, I don't know, it's just so incredible to me what changes in a woman's life when she does it and it blows people away. It's this whole, I always say it's like, it's like less is more, but what we're actually doing is bringing the body more into balance and our body thrives on it. So it's so fascinating to me. I love this. It's, it's just so much more efficient and it's, yes. it's hard to trust. And yes. again, 
Yeah. I sometimes can be criticized as a hypocrite, right? Because we all get distracted and pulled out of our natural, like spiritual, like guide guidelines, right? And yet when you're working with the body, everything just works better. When you're working with the system, it just seems to make more sense. And we have a lot of distractions in our world, whether it's Apple watches or, you know, like our kids screaming, you know, this, I, I don't know how my friends do it. The sounds that some of those toys make and they can just, <laughs> they have a natural mute button and they just tone it out. So there's a lot of things that we don't realize that we're dealing with. And by bringing the body back into alignment with itself, stressors are going to always be there, but you just have the resilience to be able to deal with them and not bring your body up into the state of overreaction. Love it. You are speaking my language, Dr. Haley. Okay. So question for you, how often do you recommend that someone come in for an acupuncture session? Well, that will be dependent on their case. And after we go through a, um, an initial intake with our new patients, um, so the practitioner, where whoever your practitioner is and wherever you are, um, will then be able to map out a, a treatment plan. Now, that treatment plan will adjust through some reevaluations over the course of treatment as a general trajectory. Typically, um, I treat and I teach my students to treat more upfront. Because when you're coming in with a main concern, typically your body's talking to you, right? And so we want to treat the symptoms and bring those symptoms back down. So once a week, twice a week for the first couple of weeks. And then after your body is starting to let go of the, the symptoms, you're starting to feel better. And you see that through better sleep quality. You know, your digestive movements are more um, smooth. Your mood overall is better. Your energy is better. Say you have hot flashes, those come back down into normal. You can tell that these markers are improving. With that, I then start to drop my patients back to every other week. And ideally, I will have them come in once a month just for maintenance, even if they're not feeling any symptoms, mm -hmm. because we want to practice this medicine as a preventative medicine. Yeah. It's a lifestyle medicine because it's supposed to work with you and Illness is supposed to be a thing we are staying so far ahead of that you never get sick. In yeah. fact, even Hippocrates said that the doctors of the future will practice to where there is no sickness. They're just maintaining the health. And oh, yeah, that's not verbatim. But yeah. um, ultimately, the idea is that if we can understand these signals and we can hear these, these cues, we don't have to get down into this deep, deep ditch to climb out mm -hmm. of, we stay ahead of the issues. Um, and mm -hmm. then for mothers who are saying, oh, I don't know if I can ever go through pregnancy again. I don't know if I can ever do like this recovery again. By staying ahead of it, the recovery is so much less intense that you might actually think, oh, that wasn't so bad. I maybe we want a third or a fourth, you know, yeah. talk to your husband. But <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I think this is amazing. Now I know that you teach practitioners. I want you to talk a little bit about that because I think we were talking before we started recording. I said, um, that I think acupuncture is something that we need more practitioners of because it is so, so incredible. And again, like I said, a good reminder for me, I need to reach back out to my practitioner, get back on the schedule because from a preventative perspective, more than anything. Um, but yeah, will you talk about your, um, your education yeah. just a little bit. Sure. Well, so I, um, I was, the path chose me, right? So I didn't really know what I was getting into at the time. And one of the best schools was out in New Mexico and I happened to have family out in New Mexico. So I went to school, um, out in New Mexico about 15 years ago at this point. And, um, the, the, education and just the practice in our country has transitioned so much in the time that I have now been in the practice. Um, ultimately, I had to go to school for four years. Um, you end up getting your medical education, your traditional medical education, and then you get your, your practitioner um, clinical hours because you need a certain number of clinical hours towards your degree to then go on to sit for your board exams and then become licensed in your state. So it's quite a process. And a lot of people, when I tell them like, oh no, I went to school for this, they're very shocked. And then they're very shocked to hear that we we take a lot of Western medical uh, classes so that we can actually sit for our medical boards. Um, with that, 
we have to learn kind of a little bit of everything because we're learning a traditional medical discipline. We have to be the translators of this like traditional jargon to modern day medical conditions and then symptoms to our patients. I had one of my uh, colleagues who is an amazing practitioner say to me, and I couldn't appreciate it at the time that we learn this advanced medical knowledge and then we have to bring it back down so that we can teach our patients. And oftentimes they don't understand why they're feeling pain radiating down their arm. They're not understanding that maybe it's coming from their neck. Right. So how to break it down and how to be able to be translators of the body. Now I came into as I came back to school here at Virginia University of Integrative Medicine um, to help with their business side, their community outreach and their business development, um, working on externships for our students. Because a lot of the time we don't see textbook cases. And I really want my page, my students to go out and see patients um, that are going to give them the best uh, knowledge of how that they, they can practice in the future. So we um, we have a clinic on campus where the students are overseen by a supervisor, treating the patients here in our school clinic, as well as externship opportunities in the community to give access to more medical care, as well as give those students that access to that kind of integrative medical care in which we hope that they practice in the future. I love it. So I will put the links to all of your stuff so that anyone listening can either look for practitioners of yours, or maybe you guys are either if anyone's close by to you, because you are in Virginia, right? You said, right. Well, yes. our headquarters is here in uh, Texas corner, Virginia. However, we have two campuses, um, one in Ridgefield, New Jersey, and one down in Duluth, Georgia. And those campuses are growing. Uh, it's awesome that just being with this company for the time I've been with them, um, they are, we've, we've increased our student, um, enrollment twofold wow. and, um, the, the medicine is growing. We have a lot of medical practitioners who come and join our school because they understand we, we all as medical practitioners, uh, know where our line stops and they want to learn more on the other side, even if it's just to be familiar with the medicine, to know when to refer out or ultimately to know how to include other types of medical practice in their current practice. So it's really a big, a big group of students that we have here. Um, potentially some of your audience could even consider, hmm, this might be something for me in the future. Yeah. And I would encourage you to take a look at the website and see, maybe it is going to call your name. Yeah. Well, I love this, Dr. Haley. So there you guys have it. There's you hopefully learned more about acupuncture today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And as always, be sure to share today's conversation with your friends and family, because you just never know that this conversation might be the piece they needed to nudge them either back to an acupuncture sessions um, or to try it out and just never know how it might change someone's life. So thank you so much, Dr. Haley. And we will, I will be back in a couple of weeks with another episode. Thank you so much, Erica.